Hi, I'm Dan, and today I'm going to be cooking a sort of moussaka inspired lasagna. So it's, I'm bringing the ingredients, the aubergine and the lamb, into sort of a standard lasagna. So I'm going to start by cutting the aubergine. I'm going to cut the aubergine into slices about half a centimetre thick. Now once you've cut the aubergines, you want to put them in a bowl and salt them and just sort of rub the salt on each aubergine slice. The salt helps to take some of the moisture out of the aubergines and it makes them easier to cook and it makes them slightly less bitter. Now I'm going to leave the aubergines in the bowl with the salt whilst I prepare some of the ingredients for the sauce. So first for the sauce you want to cut an onion up and make the pieces fairly small. Once you've cut up the garlic, you want to heat up a pan and pop a bit of oil in. There we go. Once the oil is heated up, just throw in the onion. Then you hear the nice sizzling sound. I'm using a wok today, because um, it's good to do this in. And I'm going to add to that a couple of crushed garlic cloves. And just give the onion the occasional shake or stir to stop it from burning. So I've got four garlic cloves in here that I'm crushing in. Now, while the onion and the garlic is sizzling away, you can start frying up the aubergines. Dust all the salt, excess salt and water, just sort of shake it off, the aubergines, and then put them in a pan, hot pan, with a fairly large amount of oil. And I'm shaking off each aubergine slice and popping them in there. If you want to, you can pack the aubergine slices down with kitchen roll to take off more salt and water. And I'm going to do this in about three batches probably because the aubergines take up quite a lot of space. This is what the aubergines will look like in the pan and they will fry and when they start to cook, start to blacken a little bit on the other side, flip them over. Now that we've got the aubergines on and they're going happily away over there, it's about time to add the meat to our onions and garlic. I'm using lamb. I'm using about 150 grams for two. I'm using lamb because it goes goes well with the aubergine and it's sort of in keeping with the moussaka inspired theme. This is lamb mince, just going straight. So the lamb's just gone straight in there with the onion and the garlic and frying that up right now. You've got to keep an eye on the aubergines at all times because you don't want them to burn. And as the lamb is frying away, I'm going to add some cumin and some cinnamon. Here's the cinnamon. Just a good sprinkle and the cumin. And that should smell really good when those two go in. Once the aubergines are done on both sides, they'll start to look a bit like this. And then you can take them out and put them on a plate and uh, put them on some kitchen roll if you have it, just to absorb some of the oil that they will have absorbed. And once you've done that, just pop in the next batch. And you might need to just add a tiny bit more oil to the aubergines because the first batch will probably absor have absorbed most of what you put in. Don't put in too much oil though, otherwise they'll get really, really sort of soaking with oil. Now that my second batch of aubergines is on and my lamb is cooked, I'm going to add tomato to the lamb. I'm just using a can of tin tomatoes. So here I am, just going to pour it straight in. And as well as the tin tomatoes, I'm going to add some tomato puree. So that's some good squeezes of tomato puree as well. And you probably want to reduce that down a little bit, make it a little bit thicker. And to the lamb and tomato I'm going to add some vegetable bouillon, just a spoon or so. Let's stir that in. So it's really good. And now that my lamb is happily bubbling away and my second batch of aubergines are done, I'm going to put the third batch of aubergines in and start on the bechamel sauce. So, to make a bechamel sauce, first you put some butter in a pan. I'm using this nice sort of non-stick milk pan, using about a spoon of butter. So melt the butter in the pan. I'm using this little wooden spoon, which is quite handy for this kind of thing, but a larger, any kind of wooden spoon will be fine. So once the butter is melted, add some flour and just sprinkle the flour in slowly and stirring it with the butter until it all becomes one sort of lump of floury butteriness. And stir it up into a ball and it will look something like this. So now that you've done that, get your milk and just add a tiny drop of the milk. 
Now eventually you'll probably be adding, if you use a spoon of butter, you'll probably want to add half a pint, maybe a bit more than that, in the end. But to start with, just add a tiny drop and mix it all together. And you've got to add a tiny drop to start with, otherwise it will go lumpy. Just add another little drop and mix it all together again. And don't add more milk until it's become a completely smooth paste. And once it's completely smooth again, just another drop and keep doing this until it's starting to become a bit more liquidy. And make sure to keep it on a low heat the whole time. Another drop. And now, as you can see, it's no longer a ball, but it's a much smoother paste. So now that it's a paste, and it's a bit thinner, you can add slightly more milk each time, but don't add too much, otherwise it will become lumpy and you'll have to start again or strain it or some kind of... Yeah, it's, it's not good. And just make sure you keep stirring it lots and lots all the time. It's a good, good stirring workout. Always keep an eye on your aubergines. If you're still doing a batch of aubergines, just keep an eye on them to make sure they're not burning. But I need to make sure the aubergines don't burn or it'll set off the fire alarm. A little bit more. And keep adding milk until it's starting to get really quite thin. You will have used half a pint, maybe a little bit more. Now it will be at the stage where it looks really, really liquidy. And absolutely fine. So now that the bechamel is you know, looking quite liquidy, you just keep it on a low heat, maybe turn the heat up a tiny bit now because you've got more liquid in there, and just keep stirring it and it will slowly, slowly thicken. Probably take about 10 minutes of fairly constant stirring. I mean, you can leave it unattended for a little while, but keep watching it and keep stirring and it'll slowly thicken up and then it'll be done. And now I've moved the, the lamb and the sauce to one of the smaller back hobs so it can just sit there simmering on a lower heat because the front hob's just a little bit hot. And don't worry if it looks, if you think it's not going to thicken, you think it's too thin, it'll never work. It does eventually, you're just going to be patient and it'll just it'll be stirring and stirring and stirring and it'll be too thin and you'll be, I'm usually going ah, and then suddenly it's fine. As a sort of optional extra, if you want, you can add some red wine to the lamb and tomato. I'm going to add a tiny bit. When the bechamel is approaching readiness, preheat the oven to around 190, 200 degrees Celsius. Don't know what gas mark or Fahrenheit that is. If I work it out, I'll put it in the doobly-doo. Once the bechamel is nearly done, it'll be much, much thicker. You can thicken the bechamel some more in the pan, but I'm not going to because I've got quite a wide dish just for two of us, so I need it to be fairly thin so I can actually get it over the whole thing. And it will thicken up when you put it in the oven anyway. So for the pasta, I'm just going to be using no pre-cooked pasta sheets. You just stick them in there with it and put it in the oven for about 40 minutes and then it's done. You could be more traditional, make your own pasta or use fresh pasta. I don't really have the time or the equipment to do that, so you can use these, these sheets. They work pretty well, they taste good, as long as you cook them long. So the way I'm going to layer it is I'm going to start with, start with some of my sauce, which you can see here. So, got a thin layer of lamb, like that. Next, put a layer of aubergines. These are the aubergines cooked earlier. So, it looks like that. And then I'm going to have first layer of bechamel. Then I'm going to put some pasta sheets. There, a layer of pasta. Now I have another layer of lamb over the top of the pasta. And so after the second layer of meat, put another layer of aubergines. Over the top of the aubergines, you want another layer of bechamel. Another layer of pasta goes on top of that. Just to finish, last little bit of meat I've got, followed by a last layer of aubergine and a final layer of bechamel. And now the final thing, I'm going to put some cheese on the top. I'm using a nice mature cheddar. And once you've got a good layer of cheese, stick it in the oven. It'll be in the oven for probably 40 minutes. So there it is out of the oven. Once it starts to go nice and golden brown on top, you can take it out. Just check that the pasta is cooked. Once it's taken out of the oven, leave it for about five minutes or so to rest so that it doesn't fall apart when you serve it. And here is the final article. Right, it's time to try it.
Mmm. Bon. Can you well, taste bon. all the different things? Mm-hmm. I can taste the pasta and the aubergine and the tomatoey meatiness and um, obviously the white, shiny white sauce. So yeah, all good. good. All good. Awesome. Okay then. Well, we're going to eat now. Bye. And watch Sherlock. Yep. <laughs>